you. I think I'm the last one, so well done for <laughs> sitting this way. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about teacher well-being. Um, first and foremost, a teacher myself. I'm actually at the same school as uh, Steve works, uh, Brunswick Secondary College. Uh, I'm also an educational wellness coach, and that's been for the last year. So I've taken some leave, and I've really uh, set this up to, um, to hopefully take off even further. Uh, as an educational wellness coach, I really work with teachers um, and their health and well-being because I think that is quite needed. Um, I think in a previous life I was a Top Gun pilot, but this just, just like I didn't know I was had to talk about this life or the previous life. So I think I was a Top Gun pilot in my previous life. Um, asking anything about these things, some of them might seem really unfamiliar, um, but um, definitely have lots of experience in all of those. So uh, teacher well-being. Latest study from Mon Monash Uni. See how I put the whole slide in black because it's really quite depressing. 2% um, can manage their <laughs> workload well. 54% don't recommend teaching as a career path, which is, oh, you know, if I cut this in half, kind of. 34% um, are unhappy. We're not talking about a little bit dissatisfied. And 71% feel underappreciated. Gosh, is there a lot of work to be done, right? So this only came out at the start of February, so it's really very fresh, hot of the press. Um, some other things, uh, some other statistics. Now we know that um, from the survey that came out uh, last year, um, a full-time teacher works 53 hours a week. If you work more than 40 hours a week, that is already associated with increased uh, alcohol and tobacco consumption, unhealthy weight gain, Anxiety, depression, uh, that was the principal health and well-being um, study. And about 40 to 50% of teachers leave within their first five years of teaching. I think that's a statistic you probably have heard of before. Um, equally concerning, of course. Teachers make more mental stress claims than any other industry. Just let that sink in for a minute. That's crazy. So what is there at the moment for teachers to go to? So that's why I'm hoping to bridge that gap. Because as a teacher, I understand the pressures. But when I feel like, you know, maybe taking a day off because, you know, just uh, take, a, take a mental health day, um, there's other people that are actually uh, taking really long time sick leave. And what happens to those teachers? Where do they go? They either come back into the workforce and nothing has changed, which is not helpful, or, they, um, they don't come back at all. Are they part of those 50% uh, you know, percent of teachers? So what is that really for teachers at the moment that keeps them into the workforce? Because they didn't start out burned out. They started out with lots of enthusiasm. And so there's not a lot of things that have changed. I mean, the teaching profession has changed over the years. I've been teaching for 21 years. I've certainly have seen many, many changes. Um, but, you know, you can adapt to changes, but, you know, what's there for the teachers that are, um, how can we, you know, how can we help them? A picture you're probably very well familiar with as soon as you walk into an airplane, right? You get the stewardess um, saying, you know, you have to put a mask on first, then you help someone else. So if we look after ourselves first as teachers, then we're better able to help the students as well. If we're stressed and anxious and, and you, know, we're, you know, we're not functioning to our optimal level, then how can we expect kids to flourish? It's just impossible, right? To me, that's common sense. Unfortunately, um, you know, um, all this knowledge doesn't mean you know, it's common practice. And we have to work that, that gap. I think we've all kind of been in this position at some stage. Better for worst, my, my brain needs a union rep because you're so overwhelmed with all the things that you have to do. And I guess that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm now an educational wellness coach and that's why I'm teaching, uh, that's why I'm doing workshops in schools, so that's why I'm coaching teachers one on one. And I'm saying coaching and not mentoring. I'll tell you a bit about the difference later because sometimes they get confused. Um, and the coaching side is really there to, um, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So 
why teacher well-being? So for me, my vision is to have all students benefit by having teachers who are empowered to be their best and uh, do their best and feel their best. And that all is combined, right? Where being a teacher is seen as being a great thing by everyone, including us as teachers. So the other 50, 40% or 50, 60%, you know, it's them as well. I also want to be part of the solution to some of the challenges that teachers face and empower them to transform health limiting beliefs into sustainable health enhancing ones. How often have we thought about, uh, oh, I can't do this, this is too hard, this is, you know, and we're self sabotaging and we're self medicating and we're self, you know, we're, you know there's, there's so many things that we do that are not helpful for us, but we can't seem to change it that easily because that requires a conscious process of habit change. Um, I also want educators to be the best version of themselves because, you know, isn't that what we're asking of our students? Isn't that what we're constantly um, trying our students to, to become, like the best version of themselves? Well, that's what we teachers need to become as well. So that's where um, my passion is at the moment. Uh, I love the analogy with the cake. The, 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 from the, the frozen cake before. This is kind of uh, along those lines, you know, at the, at school, at the start of the school year and at the end of the school year. So, you know, the coach approach um, to combating frazzled outlook is what I'm going to be talking a little bit about. So, what is well being? Well being is different to different people, right? It's not like a one off kind of massage. It's not like a, you know, a well being Wednesday. Uh, it's not. Um, just a one-off workshop or a training. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's like implementing these things for sustainable long-term health. So, some of the teacher challenges that we have currently um, in kind of the language that you, you know, it's like I'm overwhelmed, I'm, you know, struggle with time management, uh, that's what I hear from teachers, you know, uh, and I've experienced it myself, uh, myself as well. So stress, anxiety, uh, workplace bullying. We talked about, uh, I heard a few uh, bits uh, about uh, you know, the culture in the workplace and that we're afraid to speak up. That's super concerning, I think. If we can't speak up because we believe in something or you know, we believe that the principle is not right on something, or we, we're scared to speak up because of potential consequences. Is that true or is that a thought in our head? And is it some, simply something that we can challenge? Because a thought doesn't mean it's correct, right? Um, Self-belief and self-esteem, clarity around direction. Is this what I really what I want to do here in the school? Where can I go? I'm, okay, I'm a teacher. What else is there? I don't really want to be a coordinator. So, you know, what are the options? Um, greater purpose and connection to the workplace. And that comes also through values. Now each school has values that they kind of highlight, but often if I ask a teacher, they don't know the values of the school. They won't be able to recite them that quickly. So are you connected to the values of the school? Because values drive our behavior. It's the values that drive our behavior. Um, but also communication uh, at school and being able to say the things that you need to say to, you know, to, to get the, you know what you want, whether that is uh, in a in a well-being or health space, whether, whether it is um, dealing with uh, disengaged students or you know any of those things. So uh, opening up that dialogue and that trust of um, how can we how can we build that uh, from the ground up. Uh, improving personal well-being. So a lot of teachers actually struggle with uh, alcohol. It's a huge issue in the teaching profession. Um, but also, you know, when do I have time to do exercise? Is a common one I also here, and so um, so that well-being, uh, you know, is definitely going down. Uh, sleep, a healthy eating, uh, all those things are uh, part and parcel of uh, you know um, of a, a, a tough workload to, to manage. But we do need to manage it. We we. You know, we are given the structure in which we have to work with our timetable, where the school operates, etc. But we can make choices about how we 
um, how we go about it. And that's where I want to empower the teachers to um, help find better solutions. Um, getting increased motivation and confidence. Well, we all, I think we've all been there, that we've like whew, gone down the, the, the slope and, um, and we're just like, man, I'm so tired, right? Um, and how do you get that energy and that motivation and confidence back up again? But the coach approach to those kind of uh, issues is looking at um, unraveling all that and, um, and making it very clear. So setting goals and looking forward um, in, so into the future uh, to how you're going to achieve those goals. How many times have we set a goal and we have not achieved it? We wanted to set a goal at um, uh, New Year's, the New Year's resolution, and we ditched it by the end of January. It's so common. There's only like 12% that actually um, is able to, uh, to work towards some form of a goal that they set as a New Year's resolution. So it's very, very low. So that means that our way of how we, uh, not so much setting a goal, we can set a real smart goal, but how we go about it and implementing it and setting the right habits along the way, that's where a lot of um, the break, uh, where, that's where it falls down often. Um, empowerment, uh, so um, value solicitation, so I've talked about the values before, how they drive, drive um, our behavior, uh, and often we don't know what our values are unless you consci consciously think about those things. So what is it that motivates you? What are your values? What is it that you really believe in? And once you start writing them down, that's when you start figuring out some answers um, to why you're behaving the way you do. And also, um, strength-based approach. So has anyone heard of um, um, you know, via character or Gallup uh, strength training? So if you're not yet. Um, so having a strength-based approach to, uh, to your work um, has been proven, and the research is out there, uh, to be far more effective than looking at all the things that you're not doing right. Okay? So looking at the things that, are, that you're doing right and growing that and looking at what you're good at and you know, expanding on that rather than, this is what I'm not good at, and I need to lift that up to like acceptable standard. Um, habit change, how do you change a habit? So that's what I, I do in my coaching. Uh, building a positive growth mindset, um, so term I think you're familiar with. Um, empowerment through questioning, it's often asking the right questions to, um, to well, for me, to the teachers that I work with. Um, increasing awareness on thoughts and emotions and actions. So how your thoughts create a feeling, create an action, a behavior.